China has just unveiled a train that could change everything. A 650 kilometers per hour maglev that's outpacing a Boeing 737 at takeoff. While the US and much of the world are still debating electric vehicles, China quietly built a sleek aerodynamic machine that makes airplanes look outdated. But here's the twist. This technology wasn't originally theirs, and how they acquired it might be just as important as what they're building. So how did China leap so far ahead? Why is the US so alarmed? And could this be the beginning of a new transportation era? Let's find out. Major milestone. Now the results are starting to show. China's 600 kilometers per hour maglev is no longer a distant vision. It's moving rapidly toward reality. Since its unveiling in 2021, the project has made major strides, with the first phase of engineering completed by mid-2024. In June 2025, in a breakthrough test at Donghu Laboratory, a 1.1-ton prototype hit 650 kilometers per hour in just seven seconds on a 1,000-meter track. With control systems accurate to within four millimeters, this machine is as refined as it is fast. It runs on electrodynamic suspension using powerful superconducting magnets, paired with an aerodynamic nose inspired by kingfishers to reduce drag. The vision? A 2.5-hour trip between Beijing and Shanghai, compared to four hours on the current high-speed train. There's no official launch date yet, but China doesn't make jokes. They are serious with this vision. The future of ultra-high-speed travel is being built right now, and China is moving first. So, how does China's maglev actually work? Before we continue, I need your support. I've been making these videos because I genuinely love trains and the future of rail travel. If you've enjoyed this one, subscribing would mean a lot. I'm working toward 1,000 subscribers, and every single one really helps keep this going. Now let's continue. Inside the tech. Forget wheels and rails, this train never touches the ground. It hovers, suspended by powerful magnetic forces that eliminate friction entirely. Electromagnets lift the train just above the track and propel it forward in a controlled magnetic field. There's no grinding, no resistance from contact. It's less like a traditional train and more like launching a passenger capsule through a magnetic slingshot. But magnetic levitation alone isn't enough to reach 620 miles per hour, the real breakthrough? Air, or rather, the lack of it. At those speeds, air resistance becomes the biggest enemy. Even a slight increase in speed means pushing against a wall of drag that multiplies exponentially at 600 miles per hour. It's like trying to punch through a block of concrete. China's answer is as bold as it is brilliant. Seal the entire system in a low-pressure vacuum tube. With most of the air removed, there's virtually nothing left to push against. That means higher speeds, smoother rides, and far greater efficiency. Of course, building such a system isn't easy. It takes mile after mile of airtight tubing, advanced pumping stations, and precision engineering to handle temperature shifts, pressure drops, and the tiniest misalignments. But if it works, this changes everything. And, you know, speed is just the beginning of this story. Here's where things get complicated. Maglev technology wasn't invented in China. So, how did they end up leading the raid? China's strategic maglev takeover. The story begins in Germany, where magnetic levitation technology was first developed in the 1960s. German engineers built the earliest working prototypes and test tracks, and by the 1980s, their transrapid system was reaching speeds of 268 miles per hour, decades ahead of its time. While much of the world was still clinging to diesel trains, Germany had already glimpsed the future. But despite having the tech, they never scaled it. Political gridlock, high costs, and environmental concerns kept maglev stuck in R&D, never making the leap to nationwide deployment. Then came China. In the early 2000s, eager to upgrade its transportation infrastructure, China invited German companies to help build its first commercial maglev. The deal was simple. Germany provided the technology. China handled construction. By 2004, the Shanghai maglev, built by TransRapid, was running at high speed from the airport to the city center. But what looked like cooperation was also a strategy. Chinese engineers studied everything. The systems, the designs, the materials. They didn't just build it. 
they learned it. And within a few years, they weren't following Germany's lead anymore. They were rewriting the blueprint. I think they didn't have another choice. It's not just about prestige, it's about economic survival. With 1.4 billion people spread across a vast landscape, moving people and goods quickly keeps the economy humming. And the old ways? They're starting to crack under pressure. Highways jam, airports hit capacity. Even China's world-leading high-speed rail, more than 25,000 miles of track, more than the rest of the world combined, has limits. Trains that ride on rails still face friction, wear, and speed caps. Most max out at around 217 miles per hour in regular service. Impressive, but not enough for a country where cities are separated by thousands of miles. That's where maglev comes in. The math is simple. Time is money. Every minute saved scales across millions of commuters, shipments, and transactions. A trip from Beijing to Guangzhou that takes three hours instead of eight? That's not just convenient. It's a massive boost to productivity, commerce, and national connectivity. In China's economic playbook, speed is strategy. Is the rest of the world falling behind while China builds the future? Outpacing the West. Other countries are watching China's maglev push with a mix of admiration and concern. If China succeeds, it won't just have the fastest train. It'll gain a massive economic edge. High-speed infrastructure drives growth, attracts investment, and creates long-term wealth. And while China lays down full-scale systems, much of the world is still stuck in planning mode. The U.S. is paying attention. Startups are working on Hyperloop-style systems, including Elon Musk's vision of vacuum tube transport. But most projects are stuck in early testing. Europe faces its own dilemma. Germany invented maglev technology but never scaled it. Fragmented regulations and cautious politics slowed progress. Japan's maglev, capable of 375 miles per hour, is set to link Tokyo and Osaka by 2027. It's a technological marvel, but still lags behind China's ambition. China sees infrastructure as a strategy. The Shanghai maglev cost $1.2 billion for 19 miles, but the government sees that as an investment, not an expense. They're playing the long game, build once, benefit for decades. Of course, there are huge engineering challenges. Vacuum tubes need massive energy to maintain pressure. Safety systems must work at nearly 1,000 feet per second. And weather, earthquakes, even heat, can threaten precision. So, will China crack the code on vacuum tube travel before anyone else does? Or will the rest of the world catch up before the track runs out?